is that necessarily going to indicate the trend, Professor Liu, that online is likely to be the real thing? Oh, definitely, because uh, the consumer behavior has been dramatically changing and uh, uh, the, uh, the type of security uh, for online payment has uh, also uh, fostered the uh, online purchase uh, shopping spray. And then uh, the government has also been uh, highly supportive to lead this direction. So this is really a sort of innovative approach in the business model and also in the growth engine. Uh, for a for an economy, mm. not only about Walmart, uh, Professor Wu, it is also um, winning over Amazon in a way because uh, when it comes to the real amounts of purchasing power, China certainly is much bigger than that of the United United States and the American consumers. But how much does it have to do really with the market share of China's uh, overall purchasing power vis-à-vis -vis the rest of the world? Uh, I think indeed, uh, in the past few years, the purchasing power. Uh, for the Chinese consumers moves back quickly. And on the other hand, that is a, a, in China's market, because China's offline retailing infrastructure is not very developed. Mm -hmm. So the online retailing service pick up quickly. That is this, this topic, talk about Alibaba again, the number one uh, in the world retailing sector, reminded me actually uh, a year ago I visited Alibaba. And uh, at that time, uh, Jack Ma mentioned about his conversation with CEO of uh, Walmart. Mm. And uh, he told Walmart CEO that uh, one day and Alibaba may surpass Walmart in sales. I didn't anticipate they come so quickly. Okay, right, that's, that's kind was. of interesting. What about you, Professor Wolf uh, from the United States? Uh, uh, it, it comes pretty quick, isn't it? Yeah, so it comes very quickly. To us, Alibaba sits at the crossroads of two major trends, reshaping the Chinese and indeed the global economy. That's a shift, particularly in China, toward a much more consumer-focused economy, and it's also a shift online. So who is best positioned to sort of reap the rewards of more consumption of goods and services, both in China and more global consumption of goods and services produced in China? Obviously, Alibaba is front and center on that. And in addition to that, our lives are moving online. And as our lives move online, our consumption moves online. So if you look at the shaping trends of the 21st century, mm. Alibaba literally sits right at the crossroad of those two trends and enjoys a market share position in China that few American companies would ever occupy in their home market. Right, that's interesting. We're going to talk a little bit about the American market, the global market vis-a-vis -vis the Chinese market. But for now, let me go to you, Professor Liu. I remember there was an interesting personal bet going on between uh, Alibaba's uh, Jack Ma and also Mr. Wang Jianlin, who is one of China's tycoons as well, majored at the very beginning on real mm -hmm. estate. Then he also moved to many other areas, movies, for example. But they were having a bet a year ago as to whether by the year 2020, 50% of retail will come from online. Of course, Jack Ma said yes, and Mr. Wang said probably not. What do you think by the year 2020? We only got four years to go. Well, he has also threatened the society. You know, if he loses, the society loses. So, <laughs> therefore, uh, actually, right now, the uh, uh, in terms of the total market, uh, the retail, uh, retail uh, share, the uh, online sales uh, the, uh, for last year took uh, roughly 12%, but uh, the uh, rate of increase has been incredible uh, by 30, uh, 33%. But you also have to look at uh, the decrease of the, the speed of the increase. In fact, only a few years ago it was 70%, 70 percent, seven zero percent increase. Mm -hmm. Now we talk about 30 percent or so, right. likely to be about 18 to 17 percent, not long from now. Well, actually, if you see uh, the retail increase has been uh, kept steady at uh, roughly 10 to 11 uh, percent. Uh, uh, it is estimated e even in a sort of uh, uh, negative mode that by uh, 2020 right. the uh, online uh, sales shall continue to stay at least at 18 uh, percent. So therefore, the, the, the uh, uh, I think the you know Jack Ma is uh, most likely on the winning side. Really, Professor Wu? Hmm. I think of course there are several factors contribute to this. First of all, that is the explosion of the consumption, right. uh, particularly in China market, right? On the other hand, indeed, uh, the online sales would take off some some sales off from uh, on site. Right, that is a. Uh, uh, I think in the longer term, probably the real shopping that people more like the 
uh, demos, right? People visited uh, shops to see uh, that uh, different kind of the styles and uh, they experience the goods. Right. And then they maybe go to online to uh, purchase the goods. So That's we're probably going to see the styles changing. In the fact, the business the model well. change yeah. as well. Uh, consumers experience. Right? Yes. In, and in uh, they need to offline experience and online uh, click the button then to get uh, the the goods delivered. Alibaba is a legend. So is uh, Jack Ma, uh, the founder of Alibaba. However, the business has not gone ahead without controversies. There are a lot of controversy involved. For example, the protection of uh, intellectual property rights, the fake goods. Uh, many have accused uh, that have been a big problem for Alibaba. Professor Liu, has that problem been solved? Well, the, the problem has uh, uh, been going on for uh, quite a while, number one, because the, this business model is still relatively new and it's a game changer. And uh, uh, right now, the uh, for the fake products, you know, the uh, China is rampant in anywhere, uh, you know, both online and offline. But uh, uh, it is even worse uh, for online because people have a sense of invisibility mm. and uh, uh, they, they, they try their chance. And uh, at the so other, so you mean it hasn't been resolved? It, it has it or not, not been. It, it has, has not. not the, the but then, Professor Wolf uh, from New York, uh, let me ask you about this. Uh, as Alibaba has already become the biggest retailer of the world, it is not only the, the business size that should be impressive, but also um, the ethics and responsibilities of business. Anyone, any small, any specific business becoming the biggest or the largest or the most impressive has to shoulder certain kinds of responsibilities. What do you make of the speed of that, not necessarily catching up with the speed of the business development? Can that be solved? Because China is experiencing really fast speed growth. Uh, however, what you guys have resolved uh, over the decades, China probably has to resolve within just a few years. But is it realistic, Professor Wolf? So it's realistic to make progress. I don't know if you can get all the way to the goal right away, but I think there are valuable lessons in Walmart. So Walmart was very late to realize how important it had become in the US and how much attention and focus came on it. And it really hurt the company, it slowed their growth for a decade. So once you become as large, as dominant, really as definitive of a market as Walmart was, or certainly as Alibaba is, you are b basically responsible for the conduct of an industry. And if you're responsible for an emerging industry and an emerging economic superpower, the eyes of the world will literally be upon you. You, and mm. you have to act as though you understand that. You know, the, the joke is, dance like no one's watching. If you run this company, dance like everyone's watching, because they are. All right, how does Jack Ma dance? Uh, <laughs> how is that dance now, uh, Mr. Professor Wu? I think it, 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 uh, Alibaba in that new uh, platform and it's like a new kind of the business model, Alibaba, like Jack Ma, must also face the new challenges. For instance, I think, of course, we talk about fake uh, product, uh, actually, we observed that uh, in Taobao, actually, they just provide the uh, platform. Mm. That's other merchandise is selling the goods. And they have to inf let's, uh, strengthen the policing uh, of the product. But on their own uh, shop store, and they would have better quality. That means they need to uh, do some particular effort to manage that kind of sales. Right. And uh, they have to balance that uh, uh, generate revenues and pull more the merchandise into the platform. On the other hand, they have to make sure that the quality of the goods, right? Because it's their platform, their markets, then they want to, uh, to do the both. Mm. Right? On one hand, you see the sales, of course, of the retail has been increasing, and yeah. that has made what Alibaba it is uh, today. On the other hand, the Professor Liu, you, does see, uh, you do see Alibaba over the years trying to do some uh, very huge, larger scale promotion, for example, so-called China Singles Day, which has been literally a term being invented. On that day, everybody go online and try to buy some uh, supposed to be much l more, less expensive yes, stuff. But right. having said that though, how long will that enthusiasm for purchasing online continue? How much will that uh, uh, marketing campaign work with more, ever more sophisticated Chinese consumers, very soon they're going to learn. Well, actually, uh, in last year, the uh, single uh, single day within 24 hours, the uh, that really uh, uh, took 2.5 uh, percent of the entire uh, retail uh, revenue for the uh, entire China. So this is really a crazy situation. That well. 
uh, they really met the, uh, the, the, the FED, but I do not think they are really signal, uh, signaling uh, the, the trend because, uh, uh, yes, uh, I think you are absolutely right as the uh, uh, middle class is on the rising side right. and uh, uh, people get more rational and, and already you can see more of the people regret what they bought uh, <laughs> you know, through the, uh, uh, the impulse, uh, the uh, purchase. Yes, so, indeed. Uh, so I, I would think that uh, this will die down, but people will be well, more, more calculative and more, more rational. Okay, I will have a different opinion, because Go actually ahead. indeed the single day heavy discount indeed bring benefit to the purchasers. Yeah. Right? That uh, of course uh, there will be shifts, some purchasing from other season to that particular single day festivity. Right? And uh, I think in, in the longer term that may indeed create something like uh, Thanksgiving shopping in right, the United States. It, it, of course, ever these holidays is turn to be consumers' uh, well, festival. All right. Well, we hope that will be the case. Of course, uh, you would worry about your family members spending too much time online at that day. But but on the other it's hand, it's only for a day. It's only for a day. It's only for a day. Okay. All right. <laughs> but 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 let's focus on one very important issue. Alibaba is now not only just a retailer; it is expanding to so many different industries. For example, into the movie industry, and also uh, into the media as well. We just heard uh, Alibaba not long ago acquired uh, the South China Morning Post and now that uh, firewall has been put down. In fact, people can go to South China Morning Post uh, online for free. But having said that, though, uh, Mr. Wolf, uh, Professor, what do you make of this uh, rapid expansion of this online platform? Uh, is that necessarily going to be the trend? Uh, can and should Alibaba be more cautious as to where it wants to expand i know it has a lot of cash on hand it does definitely does but 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 the thing is what is the way for this generation of newcomers in a way alibaba included as well as amazon professor wolf yeah so i, I think it, it makes a certain sense i mean i think jack ma the senior leadership at alibaba has been very conscious very aware to kind of follow what Amazon has done. Amazon very famously bought the Washington Post here yes, in the United indeed. States, got into the original content business, put out an, a competitor for Netflix, which is now available in a, in a bunch of countries. It turns out to be pretty smart because what Alibaba is trying to do here is build an ecosystem. Ideally for them, you could live a significant portion of your purchasing life inside their properties. And so you can sort of constantly feed them data about your preferences and constantly feed them quite frankly, your income in the form of purchases. And that's a little bit the Apple model. So what we're seeing is Alibaba's making unique and Chinese use of a lot of the best business practices of mm -hmm. mega retailers and lifestyle dominance all over the world. And Jack Ma is expert at instrumentalizing this and operationalizing it. And of course, he's very sensitive to and adapted to the unique dynamics of a very rapidly growing Chinese market. So of course, there some of these will be failures, but it looks pretty smart overall. 